Today we'll be sewing the Cezanne shirt. All sections are timestamped below for your reference. Before we get started, you're going to want to have all of your pattern pieces cut uh, and ready to go. They should also be fused, marked, and notched. Some tools to have handy while you're sewing will be the awl. You'll need a box of pins. You'll need a chalk pencil or fabric marker. A ruler. A pair of scissors. Thread trimmers. A pair of sewing tweezers. And hopefully you won't need this, but a stitch ripper. So I like to serge as I sew, but if you prefer serging beforehand, you're going to want to serge your uh, armhole areas on the front panel, back yoke, back panel, as well as the sleeve, your side seams on front, back panel, and sleeve panel, as well as around the patch pocket. So before we start, I like to prep my pieces. I just find it makes um, sewing so much faster. So here I've got my front panel and I'm pressing down that uh, edge, the front edge at a half inch on the wrong side of the fabric. And then I'm gonna fold it at the notches that are located both at the hem area as well as the neckline to create the shape of my front placket. I'm gonna do this to both sides. Now, if you like the look of that lip on the outer edge of fabric, I would recommend fusing on the right side of the fabric. So here I'm working on the front panel hem and I'm rolling that edge on the wrong side of the fabric by a quarter inch and then I'm gonna roll it again by another quarter inch creating a half inch hem allowance. And I'm gonna repeat this on the opposite uh, panel as well. Now I'm going to do the same for the back panel, so again on the wrong side of the fabric I'm rolling it up at a quarter inch and pressing it and then I will roll it up another quarter inch and uh, press it again to create that half inch hem allowance. So now I've got my patch pocket and I'm pressing it at the notches, which is uh, two inches. And then I'm gonna fold it to that fold line that we just created. So that's gonna be a one inch roll. Now I'm going to uh, press the edges all around at a quarter inch. And this should be surged. I did not surge mine here, but I will surge it.
Now, if this would have already been surged, it would have actually been much easier um, because normally your surge line is uh, about a quarter inch. So you can just use that as your reference if you don't want to pull out your ruler. So I'm just using my awl to make sure that curve looks really nice. So now I'm taking my collar stand and at the neckline there, I'm pressing it in at a half inch. And I'm using really old fusing that I had laying around uh, because I couldn't get my hands on any new stuff uh, during COVID. It was all sold out. So you'll see here, it's the glue kind of has uh, worn off. So it's slightly detaching itself, which makes the sewing process so much harder actually perfect and you're going to do this to both uh collar stands so now i've got my cuff i'm folding it in half and then i'm pressing the edges lengthwise at a half inch you can do it the opposite way as well you can press both of those uh, outer edges so here I'm just rolling it over. You don't have to do it this way. Um, this is a good way to do it if uh, you wanna do stitch in the ditch to secure your cuff. So now I'm, I've got my placket and uh, what I'm doing is I'm just using my pattern piece to show you. So I'm folding it down at a half inch on the longest side and then old over leaving a half inch seam allowance. And now I'm gonna press those together. So half inch on that little tallest edge and then over leaving a half inch seam allowance and then pressing the edges there down at a half inch as well. Same on that side. I'm just fixing that because that didn't quite look too good. And once you finish doing that, you'll roll that half inch edge that is still uh, out there over the placket piece. You can sort of see what it would look like once it's on. Now I'm gonna take my other placket piece and I'm going to press that at a half inch lengthwise same with the other side half inch lengthwise and then i'm gonna press it in half so your uh, rectangular placket piece will actually be a little bit larger because i modified uh, it after i sewed this so now we're going to work on the front placket so you're going to want your two front panel pieces so i'm edge stitching this lip on the wrong side of the fabric i'm using a 1 16th of an inch edge stitcher uh, foot but you can use a regular walking foot and edge Edge stitch this. I'm going to do the opposite side, edge stitching uh, that side down to create the front placket. We're going to do that on both sides. Now we're going to attach the patch pockets. You're going to need your front panel with the patch pocket markings as well as your patch pocket. So I'm going to stitch that top edge down uh, using an edge stitch on the wrong side. And now I'm gonna place it on my markings and I'm gonna pin it down. 
So I'm placing the corners of this patch pocket on the uh, markings that you would have seen on your pattern. And now I'm just edge stitching all the way around. And now we're going to move on to the sleeve pockets. You're going to want both your sleeves as well as your sleeve placket pieces. So here I have my rectangular placket piece and what I'm doing here at a half inch is just marking with a pencil crayon. You can use a seam allowance arm if you like a quilting arm to help you out with this. This is just a little hack. Um, so I'm lining it up to uh, the marked area and this rectangular piece goes closest to the sleeve seam and I'm starting to sew it exactly where that marking is on the fabric and sewing it down at half an inch, right sides together. And now I'm taking my other uh, placket piece and I'm gonna do the same. So on that tallest edge, I'm gonna mark and I'm gonna start or finish actually directly at that crease edge. I don't know if you can see that, but where the two edges sort of meet and it starts to angle up. And again, I'm lining it up right to that line and I'm gonna start sewing right at the top of that crease mark. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the wrist area. And again, it's right sides together and this is at half an inch. Now I'm going to turn it over and what I'm going to do here is cut uh, down the center of these two pieces stopping a half inch below my shortest line or my shortest uh, seam there that I created and then I'm going to cut at an angle right to the stitch and I'm going to do the same cutting on an angle parallel to my other line creating almost like a little triangular piece and you'll see why in a minute. So now I'm just folding that piece over and here I'm cutting my seam. You don't have to on yours because you'll see that the placket piece actually fits really nicely over that seam. Um, again, I modified this pattern slightly after sewing it, but the same steps will apply. So I'm folding it over that seam that we just created and now I'm going to edge stitch it. So I'm just switching out my uh, walking foot for the uh, 1 16th of an inch edge stitch uh, foot, but you again can use your walking foot to create that edge stitch if you like. So here I'm gonna sew uh, attaching that um, pre-press piece over the seam and I'm sewing all the way up to the top. Now you can do this on the wrong side or the right side. Uh, here I did it on the wrong side. Normally I do it on the right side because uh, I want it to look good uh, on the outside. So here I'm doing the same for the opposite piece where I'm just folding that pre-press piece over uh, that slit that we just created on the sleeve sealing it in and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew all the way up until I can feel that folded piece that folded piece there that's slightly shorter I'm gonna sew right up to that edge of the folded piece and then I'm gonna stop
going to align my placket pieces and you'll see how you have that sort of triangular piece that flap that comes down so you're just going to want to push it up so it creates a really nice straight line and you can use your sewing tweezers to do this and align the pieces together nicely so again i modified this placket slightly after doing this so yours will fit a little nicer than this one did and what i'm doing is i've got my finger right on that little sort of pocket that we created in the back and i want to sew directly over that sealing that in so i'm sewing right to that edge stitch and then i'm turning it around and i'm going to seal this area by edge stitching all the way around as well So I'm going to stitch just to the stitch line that I created and then I'm going to go over it a few stitches to create a natural tack. And there we go, we have our placket. So now we're going to move on to the back yoke. So you're going to need both your yoke panels, your back panel, and both front panels. So here I've sandwiched the yoke and the back panel together. So I've got right side yoke to right side of the panel and then right side of the yoke to the wrong side of the back panel so the back panel is sandwiched between the two yokes and I'm sewing at a half inch so you can see there that's the right side so now I'm grabbing my front panels and on the right sides facing of the yoke and back panel that are stitched together i'm going to sew that shoulder area at a half inch i'm going to do the same for the opposite side together and make sure it's the you're sewing it to the right side of the yoke uh, that has the right side of the back panel as well okay perfect so now I'm taking the inner yoke um, and what I'm doing is I am taking that shoulder seam and I'm pinching it in, and then I'm pulling it through the neckline. You can pull it through the neck or the shoulder area, and then I'm gonna stitch directly on that same stitch line uh, that we just made when we attached the shoulder to the right side of the yoke. Sorry, I pulled this through the shoulder area. There we go, sewing at a half inch directly over that stitch, and I'm going to do the same for the opposite side. So I'm taking the shoulders that are not attached, and I'm turning them in, pinching them in. You can see that, I'm pinching them in at the shoulder, and then I'm pulling it through and sewing directly on that seam. So the fabric's gonna be a little bit twisted, but um, just take your time here, sew it slowly. And you'll see that it creates a really nice finish on the inside of your garment. see at the shoulder and back how nice that looks and now I'm gonna press it out 
so I've got my uh, back seam there that I'm pressing out. And I'm going to press out the shoulders as well. So you can see at the edge there of the armhole that um, it's all sort of tucked inside of those panels. Great, now I'm going to edge stitch the back yoke um, and shoulders. And then for this garment, I'm also going to do a top stitch as well. So I'm just kind of pulling uh, the fabric apart as I edge stitch because I want to get a really nice clean sort of finish. So here I am stitching, uh, edge stitching the shoulder. And the opposite shoulder. And now I'm changing to a quarter inch um, top stitch foot. And I'm going to repeat the same process on both shoulders as well as the back uh, yoke. And now we're going to sew the armholes together. So you're going to need your um, assembled bodice pieces as well as your sleeves. So here I'm attaching the sleeve. I'm starting uh, right sides together at the armhole and I'm sewing at a half inch. So making sure to match your notches. So now I'm matching the top notch of the sleeve with the shoulder there. And I'm just pulling that fabric through. Uh, you can see there to make sure that it's like laying flat. And I'm using my tweezers to do that too. Make sure you match your back notches. And you're going to want to do this to both sides. Now I'm going to serge that armhole seam and then I'm going to press it out. So I believe I'm pressing that seam um, towards the sleeve. And I'm going to create a top stitch as well in this area. So I'm sewing on the sleeve and I'm edge stitching all the way around. And now we're going to attach these side seams. So starting at the hemline with your back panel and front panel right sides facing, we're going to sew this at a half inch and we're going to continue up and um, seal the sleeve as well. So we're sewing all along that outer edge, so side seam and sleeve seam. And that sleeve is right sides together as well. Now we're going to serge that seam and then we're going to press it out. So 
So this is probably like the easiest sleeve to sew um, because you're sewing it uh, to the armhole before um, you've sewn your side seams together so it's not a set in sleeve because it's a drop shoulder sleeve it's it's kind of like a dream to sew and I really really love this shirt okay now we're gonna sew the cuff so you're gonna want your assembled garment as well as your two cuffs so at the half inch notch you're gonna line that notch to the edge of your placket and you're gonna sew it right sides together at a half inch. And now I want to seal that. So I'm taking my cuff piece, I'm folding it right sides together, and with a zipper foot, I'm sewing at a half inch right to the edge of the placket. I'm going to do that on both sides. And now I'm going to edge stitch. So I'm edge stitching all the way around because I've done a lot of edge stitch and top stitch on this entire piece, but I kind of want it to match. So. Here I am going all the way around and you'll see on this piece I did modify it after the cuff has a bit of an extension to it um, I didn't quite like it after I finished so um, I redrafted the cuff so that um, it would be flush with the placket on both sides so that's the piece that you'll be working on so don't worry about uh, that little area you'll do exactly the same thing though it will make no difference as to how you sew it. And I'll just go over my initial stitch line uh, by a few stitches to create a natural tack. And you'll repeat the same on the opposite side. Now we're going to move on to the collar. So if you're choosing to um, not add the collar and instead you just want a stand collar you would skip this step entirely um, here i have right sides together and i'm sewing at a half inch on the outer edge and now we're going to press that out you're also going to want to cut that edge down. I didn't show it on camera, but um, I cut that seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. pressing that nicely here I'm sort of like finger pressing using my tools to sort of push that seam out nicely now I'm going to stay stitch that edge and you can stitch it at a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch whatever you prefer and I'm just rolling the edge to make sure those um, areas stay nice and aligned and now I'm going to edge stitch the outer edge of the collar so I'm just switching to a 1 16th of an inch edge stitch foot again you can use your walking foot to edge stitch if you like Thank you. 
and now we're going to attach our collar to our collar stand so again if you're just um, wanting to make a stand collar you'll skip part of this step so uh, here I'm just tacking the collar to the collar stand so I'm aligning the collar edge to the first notch of the collar right there and I'm going to tack that and I'm going to tack it at center back so lining up my center back notches as well as my other edge there so tacking the collar to the first notch on the stand and then tacking that center back notch as well So if you're just doing the collar stand, this is the step that you would do. So minus the collar, you'd be lining up your pieces, right, your stand pieces right sides together uh, and sewing at a half inch all the way around. So here the only difference is that the collar is sandwiched between the collar stand which are right sides together and sewing at a half inch. making sure to match my notch there and then same here matching that outermost notch to the um, edge of the collar there and because my fusing was not sticking it was giving me a lot of trouble here So now I'm going to cut all the way around that edge to a limited bulk and I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch of fabric left here. And now I'm going to press this out. This one has a back yoke that extends onto the front panel. Uh, you'll find a notch there, so we won't be matching it to the shoulder seam, but instead to the shoulder notch. And then we're going to match our center back notches. creating puckers or pleats. And then sewing right to the edge of that placket, matching that seam on the stand right to the edge. So that it looks 
looks nice and flush. All right, now we're gonna press that out. So I'm pressing that next seam into the collar stand. And then I stay stitched the other uh, the inner collar stand edge right over the stitch line uh, where we attach the other piece of the stand to the neckline. So I did this because it is kind of like a curved piece and uh, it just makes it easier to do the edge stitch. So starting uh, at center back, we're going to edge stitch on the collar all the way around. I apologize. For the video autofocus it just kind of goes a little wonky on me I'm learning a lot as I go and uh, the next series of videos will be much better than these first seven I promise um, so we're just uh, edge stitching all the way around And I'm going to finish going over just a few stitches over where we started to create a natural tack. And then I'm going to remove the stay stitch that I created um, on the collar stand to hold it down while we were doing this edge stitch. Now we're going to press that out. So I'm just rolling the collar now over the stand and giving it a nice press. And I think we've just got our hem left to finish up. And there we go, starting with the hem. So we already have our pre-pressed hem and I'm using an edge stitch foot and I'm stitching along the lip of the pre-rolled hem allowance uh, that we created at the beginning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's annoying. And uh, I'm just edge stitching that down. So I'm making sure I'm using my all here to make sure it's nice and flat. A lot of fabric here <laughs> that I'm working with. And making sure to match your side seams on the roll so that you're not twisting your hem. And then once I finish up this hem, I won't show you uh, in this tutorial, but you'll add your buttons and your buttonholes. Um, because I'm using an industrial machine, I have a uh, special attachment that I use um, to do it, but if you're sewing on a home sewing machine, I'm sure you have a buttonhole function, which is probably so amazing to have. Um, so I'm going to do all of that off camera to finish the garment, and you can too. You can just use the markings on the pattern. Um, if you need to remark your piece, go ahead and do that if, the, if it's sort of faded as you've been working with it. Again, using my awl and my fingers just to kind of push that seam down, push those threads in. And that's it for the tutorial today. I hope you found this helpful.